Today's a big day. If you're going by Rock Valley College, stop in because you can't miss basketball. There's no, it be will be happening. College basketball. There's going to be girls basketball. There's going to be boys basketball. And one of the big organizers of this from RPS 205 is our good friend Emily Tropp. And Emily, uh, how's it looking for today? You getting all excited? Good morning, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got a couple of big things because not only this event at RBC, but we have a big event for our Reba kids over at Guilford and East, too, so... You know, anybody who didn't get their basketball fixed this week because all the games were canceled can certainly get it today. I was say, how, how tough is that running two big events like that on the same day? Well, we have a great group of people who, who handle the Reba. At this point, that committee is just like a well-oiled machine, obviously. You guys have heard about how mm -hmm. far that group has come. Um, so we have, like, a wonderful group of guys who have organized that, and... As far as the RBC event, I mean, you can't get much better than working with the people at RBC. You know, Misty Opat, Frank Horvat, Kevin Vest. They're just an incredible group of not only coaches, but um, administrators and organizers behind the scenes, too. So it is a challenge. I'll be, I'll be tired at the end of the day, but, um, but it's, we got a great team with us. Why don't you give us a quick rundown of what's going on today? Because I know it starts early and lasts all day, it seems like. <laughs> it does. Um, well, we're going to start at 10.15 with um, Guilford Jefferson Girls, and then following that one, we're just going to go back to back to back with games all day. Um, we have a projected time of noon for Auburn East Girls, then we'll start with boys at 2 o'clock, Guilford versus Jefferson, and then we'll have uh, RBC Women taking on Milwaukee Area Tech at 4 p.m. Um, at 6 p.m. is the Auburn East Boys game, and then the big finale is going to be a what's supposed to be a really good game, um, RBC Men versus Milwaukee Area Tech at 8 p.m. So you're looking at like a 15-hour day for the workers at this event. <laughs> <laughs> you know, last year, I know you guys had kind of a lot of little fun things going on in between games, things like that. Anything like that lined up for, for this year? We did have a lot of that stuff. We had a lot of like three-point contests mm -hmm. and um, cheerleading competitions last, last year. This year, um, not so many of those things, but I think the big element this year that we added was the two girls games. Um, this was actually like the third year that we've had this partnership with RBC. Matt Parker started it uh, in 2013 before I joined the public schools. Um, they had their doubleheader played with, uh, with the RBC games um, the same day as the first Champions Ball it was. And then last year is when it became known as the Rumble. Um, so even though we've been kind of advertising it as the second annual event, it's really the third year that we've had this partnership with them. And we like to add something new every year. And this year I think it was pretty obvious that we needed to add the girls. So... You know, it's going to be six games instead of four. Um, it just seems like an obvious addition. Obviously, with the uh, RBC women, you know, Misty Opat, the athletic director over there, is the women's coach who has won, you know, national titles. So we had to get the girls in there, and that's, like, the big element that we're super excited to have this year. I know you're a little bit earlier this year because last year I think it was like the last week of the Nick 10 season or the last games of the regular season. Was that an adjustment that the coaches wanted to make or it just worked out better for everybody? No, I mean, it's tough for everybody. I mean, I, that was one of the things that we definitely, it's kind of hard having it right on the heels of the holiday break for everybody, especially when you have so many cancellations this week. Not a lot of people were able to sit practice in before the event. Um, but I don't think people realize the domino effect you have when you have to try to reschedule all these games um, to make them all fit on one day. You know, you're dealing with the Nick 10 teams. Um, we had to work around RBC schedule, obviously, and who they were playing at home. So it was really only a couple of days on the calendar that we had an option of having it. And um, January 10th just happened to work out this year. You know, was there any worry as the week was going on with the way the weather was? You know, whether or not you'd get it in and what you'd do otherwise? Yeah, I mean, I, and you guys, maybe you know better than I do, but I don't remember if um, Saturday, what, what, I mean, what is the IHSA law? Because Saturday, I could never remember games ever be, really being canceled on Saturday. Yeah, not too often, no. Was, yeah, I mean, it was um, always on Fridays because there was no school, but most of the time on Saturday events usually run, you know, mm -hmm. and with the exception of some blizzard coming in. So I wasn't really worried, you know, that we wouldn't have it today at all. Um, I just was kind of... It, it was a little disappointing not having school all day, all week, and being able to promote it in the schools and stuff. But we added a couple of media partners this year that have really been pushing it. We had our media day on Tuesday with all the you know TV stations came out and have really been promoting it. So I think that we'll have um, a nice crowd there. Yeah, can you tell us how much it costs to get in and uh, what they can do? They, I mean, there's always they got good concessions there because I ate a lot of popcorn <laughs> last year. So pickles, they have pickles. Yeah. Um, 
Admission is $5, an adult, $3 for a student, and you can, you know, re-enter throughout the day with your hand stamp. So it's really, for six games, that's um, that's kind of a bargain, I think. <laughs> you know, put on the old reporter hat for a second. You know, when you look at the games, what, what, what are you kind of excited about seeing? I honestly, I'm, well, I'm excited to see the RVC games, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, those are those are, I don't think people, or maybe people have realized by this point, you know, the, the caliber play that we have in our backyard here at RBC. Um, I think both the men's and the women's games will be really good games today. Um, but Auburn East, again, you know, this is the third year that we've had Auburn East boys playing, and um, there's been some talk about mixing it up next year and having some different pairings for the games. I think everybody would love to have seen um, Jefferson Auburn, obviously, this year with mm-hmm. the, cal- the the game, but but East, you just never know. I've seen them, you know, I saw them obviously this year, and they've come a long way. Obviously, Auburn is the team that everybody wants to beat. So I'm looking forward to the Auburn East game. You still giving away that big trophy like last year? You had a really nice trophy that you gave away for. Yeah, that the- one, yeah, yeah Auburn won that one for the um, for all the little like the three point contests mm-hmm. and all the kind of fun stuff in between. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different elements to the day and. Um, like I said, we're just we're just looking forward to enjoying the day of basketball and and celebrating our partnership with RBC and all the fantastic people over there. You know that's a facility that's incredible, and I know you guys had reported it last year that um, is next year, 2016, we're going to be hosting boys sectionals over there at that site too. So um, just a great facility. You know, nothing like looking into the future before an event has even happened. I mean, what, what's the future of, of this kind of event? You know, is anything else you guys want to add or, or do differently as, as the future goes along? I I don't. Yeah, absolutely. This is one that we've we keep building on every year. Um, obviously, the the Reba element was another one that we talked about um, this year, which I don't think we've talked about this yet. But all Reba players can, you know, once they're done with their jamboree games today, mm-hmm. can run over to RVC, and if they wear their jersey, they can get into the game free. So we're kind of celebrating our youth at the event, too, and I think there's maybe an opportunity to add, you know, that element to it in the future a little bit more, but we're starting with, um, you know, letting them get in free and kind of recognizing them a little bit today. Um, But, I mean, the sky's the limit. I really, personally, I love, you know, whenever we can showcase ourselves as a district. Um, I know that the four schools are their own entities, and their own they have their rivalries but for me um you know with ups and downs the district has been through whenever we can show that kind of unity and have one event um is what i love and i don't know about you guys but have we ever had an event where all eight of our boys and girls basketball teams have played you know on the same court the same day at one event i don't i think that's pretty unique yeah i I can't remember anything like that i I know there's been some one-offs where they have the boys and girls on the same night uh but nothing where you have everybody together like that like in the whole district, right. yeah, and and to do it with RBC, which we have so many of our players that go on and, and do so well there, um, it's just, it's a great event. It's a great event. And you know, at Reba today, I think they're playing in the Guilford Fieldhouse, the new Fieldhouse, right? That'll be kind of nice for them, right? Yeah, it's. I think Reba starts at eight a.m. and they go till about three. The games at um, Guilford and East. So. Um, yeah, take your pick of basketball today. <laughs> yeah, you know what the new? Have you been? In, I haven't been in the new field house yet because they don't let you just walk in when you're at a basketball game. But that's going to be nice for for Reba in the future, isn't all those kind of facilities like that? The facilities are phenomenal. I'm telling you, if you haven't had a chance to get to all of them, take take a peek or, or let me know, and I'll uh, <laughs> and I'll meet you over there, and we can walk around because they're just insane. And what blows my mind is when I look at. Jefferson and Guilford and Auburn's facilities is if you think back to five years ago where the public schools were, mm-hmm. you just would never believe that these were the same schools. Um, they're just they're state of the art, you know, facilities, and I just think that shows what the district, you know, the importance they're having on athletics right now. Um, and that's just proof. So it's they're just, they're phenomenal guys. You have to get out there. Yeah. And the Parks and Recreation Department w- would be running all this right now if that was what happened five years ago. So a lot of things have changed, haven't they? They have. They definitely have. We have um, new facilities and, and a lot better relationships with different people in the community, too. Well, thanks so much, Emily. I know you got a busy day, and hopefully you get a big crowd and lots of good basketball, and we always appreciate you taking time to come out. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. I miss you. Okay, we'll see you, Emily. <laughs> we were talking to Emily Tropp from uh, Rockford uh, City School. She's in charge of the Rumble at the Rock. Yeah. And, uh, man, 
I went last year, and they didn't have the girls. That's a long day. It is a long, long day. And I was just sitting sure. there as a fan and watching and stuff like that. Yeah. So I had to charge my batteries up in my camera just to keep going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you run right. out of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you charge so, it up, but it's not going to last all day. That's for sure. Yeah. And if you get to go see the men's game, a men's game, you should know every player on that team. Yeah. They're basically, I think, maybe one kid from Joliet, and the rest of them are all local. Right. Yeah. It's, it's uh, basically an all-star team from the local area. You know, so that's a lot of good to see. And, and, and from the sounds of it, it's supposed to be a really good game with the men's game, too. So that, that'll that be yeah. exciting. And just a lot of good games, a lot of good area kids that you get to see today. It'll be a lot of fun. Plus, like she said, you know, most of them haven't been able to practice or have, you know, really organized <laughs> stuff. So it might be interesting. I'm sure they're in the gyms right now, a couple of them. I'm sure. Running through some stuff because uh, this is still big. These are Nick 10 games. Oh, yeah. And they're against your city rivals. Yep. You don't want to go out there and look like you haven't played for two weeks. But no, I mean, if you're going to get, uh, you know, you look at East, if you're going to get them playing their best game of the year, it's, it's going to be on a day like today. Uh, you know, because they're going to be pumped for or, for Auburn and things like that, and begin on the Rock Valley floor and, and all those things. And I think you'll see the same with Guilford and Jefferson. I mean, I mean, you know, and even with the girls, I'm sure they're really excited to get out there too. I think you're going to see some high level basketball. You know, maybe even better than some of those teams typically play, uh, because of the excitement and the crowds and, and things like that. I think it'll be a good time. And so. Uh college floor too a little right. different yeah and it's beautiful over there rock yes. valley college we're going to take a time out take a little bit of a news break find out what's going on over in paris most likely uh you're listening to the state line sports hour right now here on news talk 1440 wrok